Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just a quick repair video here on this Commodore 64. So nothing spectacular, it's going to be a chip swap. But before I do anything, I just want to show you one of the things you should perhaps do when you first get a new system is uh, measure the voltages. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Just set the meter up here, and hopefully, you can see that. Switch it on. And I'm going to measure from the common ground uh, to input first of all that 12 volt regulator. So it's like 19 volts, that's pretty high. I need to check whether that's about right. And then the, in, uh, the output 12 volts, so I've got a nice 12 volt out there that will be going to the SID and the tape deck and whatever else uses that. Um, and then the 7805, do the same thing. We'll just check firstly on the input. 10.6 volts on the output, 4.99. So um, voltage is looking okay. The other thing I'm going to do is check the fuse um, and check the fuse in the power supply and check the fuse in the power supply pl plug. That's well worth doing because uh, over years of use, it's God knows uh, what fuse ratings uh, you know are in here now. If this has been swapped out at some point in the past. Right, this is. Um, the original chip that came with this, the 6581R3, uh, it's got a date stamp on there of the uh, 48th week of 85, it's MOS. I think it says it's um, got a Philippine stamp on the underneath of it. But I noticed on Alien, uh, the flange wasn't working. Just listen to these three tests. Right, I don't know how well that came out. When I said three tests, it was basically it was three three iterations, one for each of the channels of uh, various type of sound with sweeping effects and, I don't know, filtering and all sorts of things. Um, but what I do know is I've just tried this with the spare chip I've got and it sounds a little bit different, so um, I'll try and play the two back to back so you can compare. But uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, just swap out um, for another 65 uh, 8-1, I'll just take this heat sinks off here, Let's see if I can get you the uh, manufactured date and stuff off it. Good grief, these heat sinks stick on very pretty well. So this one, as you can see, uh, again it's a 6581 MOS, 27th week 83, so this must be one of the very, very, very early um, SIDs I think, considering these have got, a, well this board's got a copyright 1984 written on it. Um, and this one was manufactured in Korea, so um, looks like I've got one of the very, very, very early um, chips here. So before I do that, I'm just going to show you the problem that I noticed in Alien. Right, so here we go. This is um, with that um, suspect SID chip. Um, if you've seen this game before, you'll be familiar with the how it sounds in terms of the flange, you know, sort of flange, pseudo flange effect. Sound right to me. It sounds like the flange is missing. Should have gone wow wow wow, but it's not. It's like the channel's working, but whatever component 
and the analog circuitry there in the SID that um, you know gives the flange effect. That's not. So what I'll do now is I'll just uh, swap out that chip and both the same game. So this is now with the, uh, as far as I know, good working SID chip, and hopefully be able to tell the difference on the flange uh, pretty much straight away. I think. Hopefully that's coming across, but I can tell the difference straight away there. There's a bit of noise in the background there, that just looks a bit sp spiky. considerably better than the other chip. Yeah, other than the noise uh, artifacts and things there, um, and it could be because it's a very early revision chip, um, it's different. So I've got the um, the crusty one out of there, the Philippines one. Uh, I mean, I say you know crusty. Yeah, there's, there's definitely something wrong with the flanging effect on that one. The one that's in, as we've heard, it sounds okay, but there's a bit. Just you get a bit of noise just on that where it uses make uses of that flange effect. Every other game I've been playing with this, and I did spend all yesterday using this. Uh, not a problem. It sounds just like I originally remembered it. Um, it was only when I got to Alien, really, when I was testing that I realised there was a problem with the SID that was on here, uh, and it might not necessarily be a fault. It could actually be. That revision, you know, there are lots of different differences between the revisions. Some of them got different uh, in the sort of low pass filters and uh, various other things. Uh, so I'll just load Sid Bench again now. You can hopefully hear the three passes on this. A lot of these are a lot clearer, even the really quiet ones. That's the silent one. No. That's a lot clearer. And that sweeps inwards. See, that wasn't happening before. It was sort of from fading to nothing to noise. Same with those. And that one. They were pretty much non existent on the other one. So there we go, I think I pretty much concluded that. Um, I'll just show you some of the other spares I found while I was uh, looking through my collection. Yeah, so when I went looking for these um, spares, I found a whole bunch. Um, obviously I've got the SID chip which I've put in there. So I'm going to mark that up and put uh, it right on the back of it or something, flange, just so I know there's something wrong with that. But um, yeah, I found a bunch of other stuff here. Um, I'm guessing I've got a lot of basic ROM, kernel ROM, I'm not sure which round those are, a character ROM. Um, that's a PLA. So I'm really pleased I found that. Um, I suspect that's okay. It's got some marks there. I think back in the day I used to mark these with Tipex as I tested various uh, chips and things when we were swapping them out. A um, couple more. I think those are the newer size ROM chips, probably from um, you know the C65C, etc. But a couple more, either character ROM, basic ROM, etc. There, I think. Uh, what else have we got? 6526, 6526A, 6526A. I'm guessing that's another 65526. If you look at the package, it's the same sort of ceramic as this, one of these early ones, 18th uh, week of 83. But you see, it's the text worn off, and I did look at it in, at an angle, and it did look like a 65. It looked like it said 6526. So I'm guessing that's what that is. Um, spare CPU, 6510. Um, on this side, a whole bunch of stuff as well. Again, I'm really pleased with Vic 2 chip. Uh, that's the newer VIC-2 chip, I think, for the 65C. Um, 
newer chip 850 R5, 88, um, 8580, sorry did I say 5? 8580, yeah, 8580 again R5, um, 14th week, uh, week of 1990, um, I think that's another kernel ROM or a basic ROM or character ROM or something, um, another VIC chip 6569R1, another VIC chip 6569R1, um, all the manufacturers, well that, that was pretty, yeah 83 I think, 1983, that one's 83, that one's 83, so uh, yeah I've been pleased with that, a whole bunch of those, um, yeah and I've got PLA which is good as well, I mean you can get uh, like modern replacements for those now, um, and then a whole bunch uh, for DRAM, now a lot of these are for Megas and stuff, like for, for these 41625 six chips um, will be for Megas and STs, um, but I got some, but you can see this because of the light in here. Some 4164s there, those are going to be for 64s. Um, not sure what these ones are here. MC, M6288C P20s, no idea. Slightly bigger footprint, those. Um, these ones are an interesting one, I'm not sure what these are, I've not used these before either. HM4864P 3, might be for a 64 or an Amstrad or a Spectrum. Not sure. Load more four one six fours. Um, more of those um, HM chips from Germany. HM three eight six or four eight six is HM four eight six four P dash threes. Perhaps like some of these. Look, I've just got a box full of damn things of various types. So uh, yeah, really pleased with that. I didn't add these. Is that more four one six fours? Yeah, more four one six fours. So certainly got some spare RAM for sixty fours here. Uh, there's a load more of it down here, all oh, this is 4164s, 4164s, some more Motorola ones there, MCM 66658P15s, could be a replacement for that, so it looks the same footprint size, it could be um, a replacement, but uh, anyway I thought you'd find that interesting, um, I'll reassemble this now, um, I'm glad I've got that SID chip problem sorted out, um, Interesting thing with this, you know, you might be wondering, you know, because you know it's one of the things you would expect. Really, you think when something's faulty, you get um, you know more noticeable um, characteristics, I guess, or behaviour in that fault. Um, and typically, you know, when a chip fails, the system won't boot, etc. And you might be expecting that's the sort of thing you would get if your SID chip failed. But you've got to remember that it's an analog synthesizer effect. So you've got a load of on the output side of it. There's a load of analog components, and even on the the part where it actually you know generates, modulates, or whatever it is the various sounds and things. Um, that's all analog, all analog control. But it's you know it's you've got some digital control um, linked to that, so you can control it in software. But it's all analog circuitry. So um, you know when things go wrong there, yeah, it's going to just going to sound strange. Channels can go missing. You can have problems with frequency, certain frequencies or certain um, of the filters, band pass filters, whatever it is. You know the, the, the features that provides. So, uh, in this case, it was the some sort of sweep facility. I'm not sure whether that, how that worked. Um, I need to look more about the, the, the internal um, technical information in regards to the, the SID chip, but um, the flange is where it was noticeable. Everything else was okay. I could play all sorts of other games and things aside from Alien. They sounded just like the original did back in the day, and I've compared them to the emulators and stuff, and they sound just the same. But with Alien, the flange, nope, definitely not. There's definitely something going on there. So. Um, it's a bit annoying, it makes me feel like someone probably sold this on knowing that that SID chip was like that because there was a lot of SID stuff on the, the, the SD card um, you know, lo loads of SID players, tons of SID music uh, it just looks like it's somebody who's uh, had a fascination with SID you know, and that's why they've got this and they would know that and I can't help but feel that someone's not just sold it on because of the keyboard but they've sort of sod it, you know um, the SID chip's on its way out, let's just flog it um, so you've got to be careful with these things, you could buy a Commodore 64 described as working, you know, 100% working and until you actually start listening to it and looking at the picture and playing it for reliability and you know, test it for reliability you don't really know what you're getting, these are these, these analogue things that degrade and stuff, it's the same with the video um, I guess to a degree, um, god that's hot, glad I've got those heat sinks on there but um, anyway before I reassemble it I'm just going to go through this myself and have my own benefit and test some of these VIC chips and just mark them up um, nothing else is really socketed on there apart from the SID and the VIC so I really don't want to start uh, desoldering chips at this stage uh, anyway I thought you found it interesting thanks for watching I'll see you soon